everybody welcome back to the channel my name is Randy this is Zephyr's Travels and Diane will be joining us a little later in the video right now I'm taking Monty and Zephyr out for a morning walk and we are at Boulder Beach campground this week it's part of the Lake Mead National Recreation Area and it is a wonderful campground we've really enjoyed our time here unfortunately we didn't plan enough time to spend here. We should have planned to be here longer and we didn't. Um, but we will definitely put this on a list of places to come back. Now it is no hookups. I guess there are a few sites that do have water. Ours didn't. Um, but there's no electricity, no sewer, or anything like that. There's a dump station of course, but no nothing else. But we thought, well that wouldn't be a problem. We've got solar, so we should be good. No problem. Well, you would think that. And I thought this would be a great time to kind of go in and do a review of our solar setup and use it for a few days and kind of show you what it, how it works and, you know, how much we love it and all that great stuff. So let's start showing some of those clips. This was early in the week and I was taking a look at where we were at early in the morning and our solar setup and then was going to track it that day and tell you how quickly we recharged and how great everything is. So check this out. So a lot of people have asked about our solar setup and our batteries and how that's working so I thought I would share a little bit today. We've been boondocking without any electric hookups and so we're using strictly solar. Yesterday was very cloudy so our batteries are down to 48 and a half percent or a little under half. The sun is just starting to hit the solar panels this morning. And if you can see up here, we are charging at 8.4 amps and rising. So we are getting more solar as the day goes on. And it is about 9.30 in the morning. So I will check on this later in the day and we'll see about how long it takes us to bring us back to 100%. Our solar setup consists of the following. We have three solar panels on the roof. They are 90 watts. And then we have a 160 watt portable panel that we can add in at any time. Our batteries are two Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium batteries. And we have a 2000 watt inverter that powers everything in the Airstream within that range. Right now we are pointed due south and it's early in the morning so the sun is still in the east quite a bit. The solar panels are just starting to pick up sun on them and they will start moving across during the day. We should, we are, as you saw inside, we are picking up about 8 amps and that is increasing as it goes along. We have the capability to have about 20 amps of charge on a perfect day. I don't think we're going to get close to that because we are in the winter months so the sun is lower in the horizon so we're not getting as strong of an input on it. But we should do pretty good. I predict we'll be over 15 amps by the time the midday hits and all the solar panels are in full sun.
Did you bring your swimsuit? I did, but I'm not going in this water. Oh. Brought your kayak. Did you go kayaking? Yeah. Maybe. People are kayaking. It's now about one o'clock and our batteries are fully charged and our solar is bringing in 11 and a half amps at this point it's in the full sun i have seen it as high as 14 and a half amps when i checked it earlier today when it first got in the full sun so we are we're doing really good we've got fully fully functional batteries back and ready to go for the next night you can see from that clip we just watched that we were fully recharged by midday that's awesome you know, we're ready to face another night. We can run all the appliances we want. Everything should be great. Well, watch this. And the story changes just a little. Well, a little bit of a problem this morning. Actually, the problem started last night. About 10.30, the inverter kicked off and I went and checked it and we had a code. And the code said low battery power. I checked the battery voltage and it was 11 and a half, which is low. Lithiums typically don't go to low battery voltage until they're close to the end of the charge life, which seemed odd because they were the battery monitor said that they were fully charged this afternoon. I think there's something off with the battery monitor because at the same time that the batteries are saying 11 and a half volts, the capacity was rated at 76 percent so i should have had a lot of battery left lithiums are supposed to be very linear with their with their voltage they don't drop off until the very end so i have some questions i'm going to call battleborn today and check into this the other problem now that we have this morning is the batteries when they get to a low voltage point the battery battery controller built into them will shut themselves off and that happened overnight because we got down to a lower vet, um, voltage point on the battery so nothing's working inside I have no power inside at all and so what I'm going to do is I repositioned the solar panel the portable one into the Sun the other panels are into the Sun hopefully that's putting a charge back into the battery and it will get enough of a charge back to start coming back to life but <laughs> I called Battleborn and talked to Derek there and told him what the situation was. Batteries are completely dead. We kind of discussed what possibly could be going on and one of the things that we think may be happening is we're not getting a full charge on them. Even though the system thinks they're fully charged, they're not. And so over the last few days I've been using more and more and more of the energy out of the batteries until last night there really wasn't enough energy left to um, make us through the night and so the batteries ran down to the point where they shut off now to get the batteries back in working order the the solar is not going to do it um, they need a impact of a lot of power like a battery charger or something so his suggestion was to pull the batteries out put them on jumper cables and charge them with the truck which is what I'm doing now he says run them about five minutes and then check them with a voltmeter they should turn the batteries back on because of that shock of uh, power that the truck is giving them. So we're done. We're now at five minutes for the first battery. So we're going to go over and check that and see where we're at. So this battery has been on the truck for five minutes. And I'm going to take my uh, voltmeter and I'm going to check it. So red the positive, black the negative. And I'm getting 12.72 volts. So the battery is now back turned on and working. 
the other batteries on I've got the that one will run for five minutes I'm using a timer on my watch to make sure I'm running about the same amount of charge in each battery because you want to keep them pretty close to being equal so now the second battery has been on the truck for five minutes and we'll check that 12.7 so I think we're close enough that we can put them back in there and then uh, hook everything back up and get the solar to charge them here's an update got a call back from the gentleman at Battleborn and we went through and made a number of changes to the settings on the battery monitor now that doesn't affect the charging or anything like that but it will tell me if I'm at a full charge or not and that's really been the issues that we didn't know we were fully charged or, or partially charged now it would be nice to be able to plug in electricity today and and fully charge that and then go through a battery cycle and that would get the settings and everything reading correctly but we're not going to have that today we don't have electricity where we're hooked up today but I did uh, check the solar charger and it's putting out 14.4 volts which is what it should be for a lithium battery on a charge cycle the batteries are over 13 volts now um, fully charged they should be 14.4 and then they should go to a float stage and that should drop down to about 13.7 so we're just kind of waiting for that kind of watch on it today we've got a lot of sun today as you can see um, here and so we will keep an eye on it check them occasionally and make sure that we're getting a good charge today and if we get a, a full charge and then a discharge tonight and a full charge again tomorrow then the monitor will get reset and we should have good readings on it going forward let's uh, cross our fingers and hope everything turns out all right or just keep chasing the Sun with the solar panels all day yesterday I carefully monitored the position of the portable solar panel in the Sun make sure I had optimum Sun on it at one point I was getting an 18 amp charge but as the afternoon came on when you think we would have the highest charge I was actually starting to lose and what was happening is there was a tree right next to our Airstream and that started shading the panels on the roof and so by the end of the day I was getting four amps two amps and so I really wasn't getting that much of a charge and that's probably why we consumed all the power out of the batteries and the batteries went dead so you're probably asking Randy is your system inadequate do you need more solar what's up well one thing I think you I gotta take in consideration is I do need to make sure that when I'm using the solar that it is parked in the Sun and not blocked by any trees because there's just some natural obstructions on the roof of the Airstream as it is with this air conditioning and the other um, vents and such in the middle that will block the Sun during the day so I do really want to make sure that the panels are sitting so they get the most Sun um, there probably is a slight issue with the type of charge controller we have the Battleborn Tech suggested that there are other type of char charge controllers that would put out as much as 30% more power out of the same panels so that's obviously something we want to look at at some point in the future and I do have room for one more solar panel on the roof and that may be an option to add too but we went through with the Battleborn Tech and we went through all the settings on the monitor which was one other issue that we had and the monitor was not reading correctly so when I thought I had a full charge I actually didn't I probably had a half a charge or less and so we went through all those settings and updated those and at this point I think we're in better shape though I haven't been able to get a full charge on it yet we are leaving here today and we're heading to a campground where we have electricity so we'll get the batteries back to a full charge Hi right, guys get in the truck Come on, get in the truck Monty there you go get in there Ready for another adventure? Another ride? Ready to go for a ride? Okay, well we're back on the road and we've left Boulder Campground. What did you think of the place? Uh, I thought it was nice. It was, a, it was a nice campground. The site was cement and um, so they make it easier for parking. It was a good size site. Yeah, you weren't on top of your neighbors. No, no. The section we were in was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great uh, bike path that you can get on right in the park, and it goes quite a long distance. Yeah, I think it goes 20, 30 miles. Yeah. So we did that a couple days. Not the 20, 
30 miles. No, not that far. Um, but we did ride down pretty close to the lake, Lake Mead. Yeah, we rode down to the lake. And mm -hmm. you're actually, I mean, it looks like you're right on top of the lake in the campground, but you're actually quite a ways away. I right. Mean, the, if you were to walk down to the lake, it's probably over a half a mile, mm -hmm. close to a mile. Right. And it's all downhill, so it's going to be an all uphill walk. You can launch your boat at the marina. You can put your kayaks in. Yep. They did have a beach area, and but it appeared to be mostly rocks and yeah, stones. Yeah, rocky stones, so, which is pretty much what everything is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, for us, the time we were there, the weather was great. It yeah. was up near 70 degrees, sunny. So, yeah, and it, it was close by Boulder City. Right. So you could drive into Boulder City and, you know, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, we didn't we didn't do as much uh, sightseeing stuff at this time because you know we ended up having to work a little bit. We had things we had to get done and, and such, and we weren't there that long. We were only there for four nights. Right. Um, right. But it, it would be nice to go back and, and, and kind of tour around Boulder City because it looks like a nice place. Yeah. It did look like there were some nice hiking trails. I noticed when we were at the visitor center, they had a, a sign up about a railroad hiking trail there was no railroad tracks that actually had a tunnel that you could walk through right and that seemed there was a lot of cars and seemed like a lot of people go there yeah it looked very popular now there is no electricity no hookups some of the sites do have water um, but most of them don't and no hookups no electricity no sewer or anything like that you're going to need to have a generator or some type of solar and unfortunately we have a little problems with our solar <laughs> and we probably seen that in the video already mm -hmm. but yeah, one night we lost our we lost our electric so yeah it was yep. rather dark in our trailer yeah fortunately it wasn't cold out so we didn't need you know, heat. heat yep so that was good surprising how much of a stuff runs on electricity in your trailer when you don't have it like your water and <laughs> your hot water and all that stuff didn't work until we got the batteries going again right it was a nice area and I'm glad we got the opportunity to stay there. Yeah. Yeah, at $10 a night for uh, if you have an annual pass or a senior pass. Right. And $20 a night otherwise, which still isn't bad. Yeah. And the place is beautifully land landscaped. Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt more like a resort than a, you know, a, a state park or you know, a campground. Right. And the people that work there are very friendly. Yep. Um, very efficient. They're around and talking to everybody. Yep. enjoyed this video if you did please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel Zephyr Travels hit the bell for notifications so you know when we post new videos we try to post videos on a weekly basis love to have you follow along and leave us a comment we love to hear from you so until next time we will see you down the road bye guys take care